Thank you for uh, tuning into the uh, Talking Tech uh, monthly video series. Uh, today, our guest is Matt Douglas, uh, Senior Director of Sales Engineering with CBTS. Uh, Matt, thanks for joining us. Absolutely. It's a, it's a pleasure. I appreciate it, John. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I know one of the questions that our customers, you know, regularly ask is, you know, what's going on with SASE? Who's the right vendor for me to use for SASE? And I know CBTS does a lot sure. in that space. So we appreciate you tuning in and giving us some some background there. What does SASE mean to you when when someone says that? What What is your definition and how do you define sure. that? Yeah, because there's been a lot of definitions, right? As this term's come Absolutely. around. Yeah. Um, it's certainly been, it's come from the evolution, if you would, of SD-WAN was first out there in the industry. And then as we started to connect businesses together, what was happening with their security fabric, right? And so for us, SD-WAN really is about taking an intelligent, excuse me, SASE is really about taking an intelligent SD-WAN edge and combining it with an intelligent cloud security fabric. Oftentimes people call that SSE. So really for us, SASE is SD-WAN plus SSE equals SASE. Um, and really this, this journey we've seen customers on is that they want a ubiquitous security fabric, the same security experience, whether, you know, whether I'm working from my laptop in the office in Indianapolis or the office in New York City or from my home or, you know, from a Starbucks, it needs to be that same experience. Um, and certainly it's been driven as well by where applications are, because again, you know, when we first met customers 10 years ago, those applications were all sitting at data centers or headquarters. Yeah. And now those applications are in SaaS applications. They're uh, in, you know, maybe people are moving things to AWS or Azure to other third-party resources. And so this uh, idea of the fact that our applications can be in any cloud, we're kind of in a multi-cloud environment, well, then my security fabric's got to be able to support that. That's the thing that can, SaaS can help our customers with in a journey. Sure. And I mean, with COVID and, and all of the impacts and the remote workforce, and, and now that people are moving more back into the office, you know, that's only hyper accelerated all of that, right? So the ability to connect in a good way from those, you know, remote offices, like you said, whether it be a Starbucks or whether it be somebody's living room, you know, uh, that, that's, and being able to secure that connection is what we're seeing with clients as well. What, and, and what the other thing too, I might, real quick, I might add, the other thing too, is that the, the journey now is ZTNA, you know, we, we've right. heard the term ZTNA for a long time again from, from, you know, the vendors out there. Uh, but that those technologies are now maturing and we're seeing more and more folks who are realizing that the standard VPN technologies have kind of VPN and back into the data center headquarters and having a pretty wide look at all the resources back at a data center headquarters. You need to limit that to, to kind of a ZTNA fabric of it. when I'm again working from my laptop. Maybe Matt only needs to see certain applications back at the data center or even certain SaaS applications. So. We're seeing a big movement too of, of customers starting to look at ZTNA in ways that they just didn't do in the past. Yeah. What are what are some of the key challenges that you see SASE or ZTNA uh, solving for businesses? Yeah. Um, well, I go back to kind of the ubiquitous, uh, a ubiquitous, consistent security fabric, no matter where I'm working from, so that, you know, um, the alerts, the analyzation, you know, the threat hunting is the same whether I'm working from the office, whether I'm working from home, whether I'm working from Starbucks. That's a big deal. Um, certainly growing compliance regulations and growing cybersecurity insurance regulations are driving a lot of this change. Um, you know, it's I'm sure you've seen this with your customers, right? It's getting to the point where cyber insurance people are now requiring uh, certified backup and DR plans, certified MDR plans, things that, again, you just didn't see two and three years ago. So um, I think this is being driven by, you know, a lot, a lot of times by compliancy, by cybersecurity, but then even from competitive things. I mean, we're starting to see our customers more talk about that security is part of their brand, not something that just IT does, but security is part of marketing, that when they're talking to their customers or their third party vendors or the people in their ecosystem, you know, their security fabric is becoming part of their brand and part, you know, part of their value as a company. So it's we're starting to see people invest more in security, certainly than they did a couple of years ago. You know, for our viewers out there, if you found value in the information today um, and the uh, being able to uh, sit in with uh, with an expert in the field uh, who's been doing this for a, for a nice long time. 
Um, please like and subscribe, um, and we'll see you next month.